Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I recap the CBS All Access original series, Star Trek Picard, season one, episode nine, entitled At Antarctica Eco Part One. I'll do a recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side, and I'll make sure to put my predictions in the comments. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. <laughs> Opening scene, the crew is going in crazy warp speed as they journey to Soji's homeland. Unfortunately, Agnes is so over it. She's over the experience of this warp speed and cradles herself underneath the table. The crew looks excited and they're very curious to what awaits ahead. As they arrive, they see this beautiful planet and they're all in awe. And they're amazed by what they see, this beautiful planet and those two red moons. And Rafi and Rios, they confirmed that there aren't any other ships around and they have appeared to beaten all of the Romulans. Rafi is in awe and she says to Soji, good job in getting us here so quickly. And Picard reiterates and says, wow, 25 light years in just 15 minutes. Soji, she looks at the planet and she says, Capelius. As they observe this planet, they are attacked by a Romulan ship hot on their tail. They are able to fight back and weaken the force field of protection on this ship and possibly have injured the pilot. But Picard wants to know the status, the health status of this pilot. Rafi reports that there's life, but the pulse is faint. And Soji says the pilot, let him die. They attacked us. And Picard says, there's a difference in slowing down your attacker and killing them and request that this pilot is transferred to their sick bay. But unfortunately, the pilot has reversed the cloaking device and has used it as a projector to attack them back. Out of nowhere, the Borg cube appears and this flower-esque presence, this orchid-like presence, and it surrounds the ship and the crew has no choice but to be submerged by this entity. They have no idea what's going on as the orchid surrounds them and the ship loses power but seems to act as a brace of some sort while entering into the planet's atmosphere. As this happens, Picard seems very weak and faintish of some sorts and says to the crew, thank you everyone for coming, and the crew, very puzzled about what's happening to him, rushes to see what he needs, and the opening credits are displayed. While Picard is out, he has small visions of moments before he left the chateau, warnings from his doctor, doubts and feelings about going on another mission. As he comes to, Agnes says, you are out for a while, and she gives indications on her face with emotion that after medical examination that she knows he's not well. Picard feels like it's the perfect time to address the crew. And he says to everyone, I have a brain abnormality. It's terminal and there is no effective treatment. And anyone treating me like a dying man runs the risk of pissing me off. We will return to Soji's homeland and inform them of Romulan pursuits to destroy them. The crew is saddened by what they've just heard and we even see tears from Rafi, but they become collective as Picard wants a status of everything that's been going on. And Rio says the ship survived the attack and the landing, but the Orchid's assistance helped us, but wiped out our system. We're offline and we don't have any power. And Rafi says, this is a class M planet and slightly dense than Earth. Um, before we were offline, we were able to see a small settlement. And Soji says, yes, Capelli is a small settlement. 
I was born there. I feel that I was born there, but my memories are jumbled. And the settlement is a few kilometers away. And Agnes says, do you think that they hate us? And Rafi says, well, maybe it'll be a day or two before the Romulans arrive. And Picard says, well, I suggest we all take a walk. The crew gets off the ship and Rio says, well, it's hot. And they see the crashed artifact from afar. And Picard wants to know, what is the survival chances of anyone on that artifact? And Rafi says, a mass that big going that fast, it's highly likely anything survived. And as they get closer to the artifact, they choose to stick together and observe everything. They are approached by ex-Borgs and they're afraid at first, but then we see Seven of Nine and Elnor, and Picard is very happy to see them all. And everyone seems to be fine and trying to reactivate power and get online. Rafi and Rios, they do notice, unfortunately, that 218 warbirds are en route. Elnor is saddened and says that Picard is dying. And Picard gives that look to Agnes because it's evident that she's told him so. And he wants to protect Picard more than ever. And Picard says to Elnor, the XBs need you more than ever. And to get the defense mechanisms working again so your presence is needed. And Seven of Nine and Elnor say their goodbyes to Picard just in case this is the last time they may see him. The crew sees the settlement and it's beautiful. And as they look around, it seems to be a very calm sediment. The people are welcoming. The people are enjoying each other's company. And a woman approaches Soji and says, Soji, finally, how we've missed you so. And Soji says, your name is Arcana. <laughs> yes, these are my friends and I'm home. And Arcana notices Picard and says, your date is Captain, Captain Jean-Luc Picard. And she's intrigued to observe his face. And before touching him, she says, may I? And he allows her to touch his face. And she says, they're just lines. Hmm. Not empty, but they say so much more. Grief, happiness. And she's observing that lines mean something to humans. She also reiterates that your success in coming home, I sense that it also brings bad news. She's told about the Romulans and their pursuit and how they're on the way. And Rafi says, please tell me how many orchids do you have? And she says, we only have 15. Now we're down to 10 orchids. And then we see someone that looks very similar to Data. And he tells them that I am Dr. Alton Indigo Sung. My father had me, but he created Data. And Picard says, you look so much like Data. And he says to his children, per se, get him some water. <laughs> Us organics are not machines, you know. Soji feels guilty that she's led the Romulans to their planet. And Alton says, you can't feel bad about keeping a secret of something you didn't know about. Alton has said that he's sad that the band brought out the deceptive side of Brutes and how it would draw unwanted attention. We see someone that looks just like Soji. And she says, you may have brought us danger, but you've also brought us answers. And Rio says, that's Jana. And Alton says, no, this is Sutra. Jana was her sister. Sutra says, what you experienced, this admonition pushed you to kill Bruce. And I believe those visions were false. And to anyone that's not a synthetic, that yes, these are visions that would make anyone go mad, but they were intended for synthetics and not human minds. And Picard questions, for synthetic minds? And Sutra says, yes, it indicates that she needs to see. I need to see what Agnes saw. 
Bolton begins to brag on her capabilities and that she's able to mind men. But Rios doesn't want this to happen. And he knows that Agnes is just now getting to a state of some clarity. But Sutra warns that she shouldn't be afraid. And this mind mending begins. We hear a narration over a sequence of different images. And it appears to be a synthetic voice that says, Life begins. The division and replication, life evolves, yearns for perfection, leads to synthetic life. Organics preserve this perfection as a threat. When they realize their creations do not age, they do not become sick or die, they will seek to destroy, and in that process, destroy themselves beyond the boundaries of time and space, we stand an alliance of synthetic life watching you, waiting for your signal. Some of us think you will come and will have our protection. Your evolution will be their extinction. Sutra releases Agnes and says, Fascinating. Agnes, she's joined Alton in his quarters where he studies. And Alton says, you owe a great debt for taking Bruce's life. (sighs) Taking out a bright light of darkness. Shame on you. (sighs) And Agnes feels very bad and guilty about what she's done. And Alton (sighs) is beginning the process of mind transfer. And he wants Agnes to, quote, repay to give one life and not take one. And Agnes feels that it's her responsibility to help him with this. Sutra is talking to Soji and says, we don't have the resources to fight. We have an old man, orchids, and your friends. We won't hold out. And Soji says, we have Rios. And he's already said that he's working on a way to gather you all and we could we could get away from danger. And Sutra says, run? <laughs> Only for them to track us down again and to destroy us. They will not stop until they've accomplished this. They see us as monsters, abominations. There is no alternative. And so she says there has to be some way, something we can do that won't involve so many people to die. And then we see Narek and he's been captured. And Sutra is pleased to say, look at what the cat dragged in. Agnes, she enjoys the company of a cat named Spot, too. And Rios is trying to get the ship back online. And Picard thinks that they can get everyone out. And Agnes is going to stay there and help finish what Bruce started. And Rios tells her to stay alert because I don't know if I trust them. And Agnes says, trust them or do you mean me? Promise you won't forget me. And Rio says in his special way that he won't forget and to stay alert and precautious. Akana tells Rafi, this will help you fix your ship. (laughs) Rafi is puzzled and looking at the device and can't figure it out and asks, how? And she tells her, you have to use your imagination. And she walks away. And Rafi tells Picard, I know I'm breaking the rules, but, and she gives him a hug. And she says, after everything you've done for me, thank you. And I love you. I I know you don't have to say it back, but you you can if you if you if you want to. And Picard says, um oh, okay. Uh thank you. And it takes him everything to say, I love you too, Rafi. Later, Picard goes to send a message, and he's repeating, To Starfleet Command, we have a first contact situation. We need diplomatic negotiations to protect the inhabitants from incoming Romulan attack. We have the other sister, Saga, who views Narek, pleas for water. And he's pleading, I need water. I'm thirsty. Is this how you treat your prisoners? And Saga says, we've never had a prisoner before. What what do we do? And she listens to Nara to give him something 
water. But Soji sees this and stops her before she has a chance and says, no, don't listen to him. And Narek says to Soji, I love you. And Soji says, I was dumb for believing that. And Narek says, we're going to rain down and kill everyone, even you. And Saga says, we'll give you food and tend to your womb after Soji leaves his presence. We then see a sequence of scenes going back and forth from Soji and Picard to Narek's location. And Soji says to Picard, I can't believe Agnes did what she did to Bruce, but I understand the logic, logic of sacrifice. And Picard says, I don't like the sound of that. And Soji says, well, what is the logic of sacrifice? Because said, it all depends on the person holding the knife. Sutra tells Saga, I'll watch Soji's friend. And she removes the shield, keeping Narek away. And she tells him, I was concerned about my desire to kill you. But <laughs> what you can do for me outweighs that. And how would you like to get out of here? Soji says to Picard, what if killing is the only way to survive? And what if killing is the reflection of fear, opposite of logic? And Picard says, Soji, what are you considering? And we hear a scream. And poor Saga has been killed. And we do see Olten there bracing her in tears. And Soji feels so guilty and says that I had a chance to kill him. But I didn't. After these events, Sutra has gathered everyone and she's making a speech to everyone, telling them we will always be hunted. They want to kill us. It is their intent to exterminate us. This admonition. What you thought, Agnes, is something is, is a warning. But to me, it's a promise. And Alton says, yes, higher synthetic beings are watching us. Subspace frequencies encoded in admonition. And Sutra says it's suitable to begin summoning them and transmitting them before the Romulan arrives, which will be in about one day. And Alton says this new federation unites synthetics in a power alliance spreading across galaxies. And Sutra says seek out advanced life from organics and to eliminate the threat of organics, this annihilation, life forms. And Picard says, all? And Sutra says, what is the difference between the Federation and Romulans? Banning synthetics was the beginning of destroying us all. And Picard says, you're going to destroy us all? You will fulfill their prophecy in becoming the destroyer after all. I have a ship that will be safe and I will advocate your safety to the Federation and to the stop of banning synthetics. And Alton says, you didn't, you're not getting it. They didn't listen to you before and you all, what makes you think that they will listen to him now? And they demand to lock up a card to stop his persuasion and changing anyone's mind. And Agnes says, help me to keep Alton safe and to survive what may happen. Think about it. I've gone my whole life trying to get here. And Sutra, she says, do you think that's true? And Alton says, Agnes is as close to any mother form as you can get. And Sutra asks Agnes, would you die for your children? I will know if you're lying. And Agnes says, yes. Picard is saddened by her response and says, Agnes. And they start to take Picard away. We then see a shot of Commodore O getting the status. And someone reports to her, 24 hours till landfall. And this planet has minimal defenses. And that is the end of the episode. Make sure that you come back to the channel for episode 10, the final episode of this season. Subscribe, 
hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and let me know what you think and your predictions for the end of the season. I don't know if you noticed, but I subscribe to whoever subscribes to me. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbunt underscore E. Until next time, I'll see you. Bye.